Hello, my name is Chief Wayne Klein with the Delaware Natural Resources Police Division of Parks and Recreation. Today we're here at Cape Penelope State Park to talk about our surf fishing vehicle program. Since early civilization, common people were able to access the sea to retrieve food and feed their family. A Delaware State Park surf fishing permit originated with that same spirit. When the state of Delaware took over management of the beaches, there was already an established group of fishermen that drove their vehicles onto the beach to surf fish to provide food for their families and as a form of recreation. Today, Delaware State Parks manages over seven miles of beach that is available for surf fishing. In order to fish on the beach, you must possess a surf fishing vehicle permit. These permits are for surf fishing and are not a permit to just drive on the beach. All of our surf fishing beaches are multi-use beaches and no one group of people is given exclusive access for any given recreational activity. Surf fishermen are the only group of people that are allowed to drive on the beach with their vehicles with the stipulation that they must be actively engaged in surf fishing when they are on the beach. Many areas throughout the country allow vehicles to access their beaches for various reasons. But recently, there has been an increased public scrutiny of this activity due to environmental issues and a lack of enforcement of the acceptable behaviors on the beach. Delaware State Parks has a long history of regulating surf fishing. The Division of Parks and Recreation has an established set of regulations and properly enforces them as needed. Vehicles. A four-wheel drive vehicle is not needed to access our beaches. However, there are very few vehicles that are capable of driving on our beaches without having four-wheel drive. Vehicles must have two axles and no more than six wheels. Motorcycles are not permitted, but dual-wheeled trucks are permitted. All vehicles must be registered and licensed to operate on state roadways. Permit. A valid surf fishing vehicle permit is required and it must be mounted on the front of your vehicle when you are on the beach. You must also have your surf fishing permit receipt with you at all times when you are on the beach. Permits are assigned to the vehicle and may not be used on another vehicle without officially transferring the tag at the park office. Failure to transfer your tag or lending it to another vehicle will result in enforcement action and possible confiscation of the tag. You can purchase a surf fishing permit online at destateparks.com or at any state park office. Equipment. Shovels. All vehicles must have a shovel. A long handled pointed or round headed shovel is best. If you have room in your vehicle, two shovels are always better than one. Jack. All vehicles must have a jack. Most vehicles come with a jack somewhere in the vehicle. Make sure that you have one and that you can access it if you become stuck in the sand. Boards. All vehicles must have a board. If you place your jack in the sand and try to jack your vehicle up, you will likely push your jack into the sand. The board is to place your jack on so that you can raise your vehicle. Pick a sturdy board like a 2x10 or 2x12 or a 2 foot square piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. You want to have a sturdy base to place your jack on. Tow rope. All vehicles must have a tow rope. Chains are not recommended because they lack the needed elasticity to help remove stuck vehicles. Tow ropes and straps with loops are recommended over those with open hooks on the end. The open hooks have caused injuries when they become unattached and under pressure. We recommend open loops and shackles to attach the rope or strap to the vehicle. Tire gauges. All vehicles must have a tire gauge capable of measuring tire pressure when deflating and inflating your tires. Two tire pressure gauges are better than one and allow for faster airing up and down. Fishing licenses. The surf fishing permit will act as a fishing license for one person in the vehicle only when you are on the state park surf fishing beaches. If anyone else touches the surf fishing equipment, they are required to have a fishing license unless they are under 16 years of age or are a Delaware resident over the age of 65. If you are over the age of 16, you will also need a Fisherman Information Network number or FIN number. These numbers can be obtained online at www.delaware-fin.com or by calling 1-800-432-9228. Fishing equipment. All vehicles must possess adequate saltwater fishing tackle, bait, and or lures commonly used for surf fishing. This includes a rod and a reel capable of casting typically four to six ounces of weight and up to eight or 10 ounces of weight during heavy surf conditions. Surf fishing rods are typically over eight feet tall in order to keep the fishing line above the wave action. Fishing rods with cartoon characters on them will typically not be adequate. 
all of the local tackle shops have appropriate and affordable options. Actively engaged. The use of the surf fishing permit is restricted to persons actively engaged in surf fishing. Any permitted vehicle that is parked for any period of time must have at least one person actively engaged in surf fishing. Our recommendation is that the fishing equipment is the first thing to come out of the vehicle for setup and the last thing to return to the vehicle when leaving the beach. Actively engaged means that a person is taking all reasonable and necessary actions to maximize the probability of hooking and landing a fish by rod and reel attached to a baited rig or artificial lure. You must be within 50 feet of your fishing equipment and you must tend to, cast, and recast your line as necessary. A good rule of thumb is every 30 minutes. Fresh bait is the recommended option which includes cut bait like squid, cut fish, or bloodworms. You may also use artificial lures and flies, but they must be casted and retrieved the entire time that you are on the beach. Plastic and or rubber worms or fish are considered lures and must be casted and retrieved. Bait substitutes that are manufactured from fresh bait are acceptable to be used as bait. Air pressure. Air pressure is the most important factor when it comes to operating your vehicle in the sand. You must reduce the air pressure in your tires before driving on the beach so that your tires gain enough traction on soft sand. Reducing the air pressure makes your tire longer and wider, allowing your vehicle to float across the sand. A good starting tire pressure is 20 pounds for most beaches. During the hot, dry periods, the sand becomes softer and may require pressures as low as 15 pounds. Pressures lower than 15 pounds are not recommended. Here is a simple test to check for your proper tire pressure. If you are driving down the beach and you take your foot off the accelerator, your vehicle should coast to a stop. If your vehicle stops suddenly, then you need to let more air out. Four-wheel high, low, and all-wheel drive. If you have the option of four-wheel high, four-wheel low, and all-wheel drive, you may have to experiment to find what is best for you. Most vehicles will operate most effectively and efficiently in four-wheel high. Four-wheel low is generally not recommended as vehicles can become stuck in the four-wheel low, and the gear ratio is typically too low to allow your vehicle to float across the sand. Driving. You will see ruts or tracks from the other vehicles. This is pre-packed sand, which is much easier to operate in. The sand may have been packed by one truck or a hundred trucks, but it is always better than driving in unpacked sand. You will also notice that there are one or two rises or crowns on the beach caused by the daily tidal action. When traversing the crown, it is best to make gradual turns rather than sharp turns. When climbing uphill, it is best to drive parallel to the beach and then gradually turn uphill. Sharp turns on the beach cause your wheels to push sand thus slowing your vehicle abruptly, which often results in your vehicle getting stuck. Turning sharply uphill or downhill is the second leading cause of getting stuck after improper air pressure. Speed on the beach is not to exceed 15 miles an hour or that which is necessary to maintain speed, traction, and control. Seatbelt usage is mandatory when driving anywhere in the park, and having passengers in the bed of the truck or outside of the passenger compartment is strictly prohibited. Only marked vehicle crossings are to be used to access the beach. Driving in or on the dunes or pedestrian crossings is strictly prohibited and will result in fines and an additional per foot penalty for each wheel track. Crossings. The crossings or entry roads to the beach can be challenging at times. The sand is usually soft and you may have to stop because of other vehicles and or pedestrians in the crossing. It is best to stay in the ruts or tracks and maintain your speed. Vehicles exiting the beach are climbing uphill, so it is best to allow them to have the right of way if you are entering the beach. Mastering the crossings is mostly about finessing the gas pedal. If you find your vehicle slowing down on the crossings, the best thing to do is release the gas pedal just a little. The vehicle is typically slowing down because the tires are spinning, and giving it less gas slows the spinning of the tires. Getting stuck. The best advice is not to get stuck. If your tires are spinning and your vehicle isn't moving, you are getting stuck. If you continue to spin your tires, each tire will dig a deeper hole until your vehicle frame is resting on the sand. If your frame is sitting on the sand, you are officially stuck. The best advice if you find your tires spinning, stop, don't continue to spin your tires. Get out of your vehicle and air your tires down a few more pounds. 
you will be amazed at the difference a few pounds makes when you get between 15 and 20 pounds of pressure. We don't recommend going much lower than 15 pounds. If you are stuck, you have the option to call a specialized towing company, which will take about an hour or more to arrive and will likely cost several hundred dollars, or you can do it yourself. Both your long-handled shovel and your surf fishing partner will come in handy when digging yourself out. Dig out from underneath your vehicle so that you can see daylight through the undercarriage. Dig out a wheel path behind all four wheels. You will want to back out of the sand that you know is already packed behind you. Be careful not to hit your tires with your shovel when digging. You can expedite this process by using your jack. Place the jack under your vehicle and jack your tires up. When the tires are up as high as they can go safely, go push sand underneath your tires, thus building the surface under your tires rather than digging the sand out from under them. Make sure not to get under the vehicle as it will be unstable when resting on the jack. When using a tow strap or rope, it is important to know that vehicles must be snatched or jerked rather than being towed. You will need to attach both ends of the strap or rope to the vehicles and then back up as close to the stuck vehicle as possible. When both drivers signal that they are prepared, the snatching vehicle will accelerate as much as possible without spinning tires until the strap tightens and snatches or jerks the other vehicle from the sand. Vehicles that are completely resting on their frames are not easily snatched and should be at least partially freed from the sand. Swimming in the ocean can be a very dangerous activity, and multiple people are killed and or seriously injured every year on the Delaware coast. We recommend that all swimming occur on our guarded swimming beaches. Swimming must not interfere with you or your neighbor's ability to fish. You have to fish, but you don't have to swim. If the vehicle parked next to you is impeding your ability to fish, you can nicely ask them not to swim, or you can call a ranger to ask for assistance. Other beach issues. There are occasional closures on the beach related to beach habitat protection. The point at Cape Henlopen is closed annually from March 1st to September 1st. There are other periodic closures that are defined by temporary fencing and area closed signs. Sometimes the fencing does not reach all the way to the water because of the tidal action. Please keep a lookout for the signs and fencing. The dune habitat on our beaches is unique and sensitive to disturbance. We have rare and endangered species of plants and animals that live there, so please keep yourself, your pets, and your children out of the dunes. The dunes also serve to protect the park from the ocean during storms and extreme tidal events. One person walking up the dune can be the start of a chain reaction that eventually leads to the dune collapsing at a later date. Pets are welcome to join you, but please make sure that they are on a six-foot leash and under your control at all times. Pets can cause problems for the wildlife that live in the park, and there are animals in the park that can cause your pets harm if they are not properly restrained. Alcoholic beverages are allowed, but we ask that you use discretion and understand that this is a family atmosphere. To maintain a positive and enjoyable natural experience on our surf fishing beaches, there is only one vehicle allowed between the ocean and the dune. Vehicles may not double park or stack up behind each other. When you drive on the surf fishing beaches, you are subject to be checked by the enforcement staff. Please keep your required equipment in an easily accessed area so that you don't have to unload your vehicle to provide proof of your equipment. These checks can be random checks while on patrol or organized checkpoints at the crossings. The beach is the interface between land and the ocean and on occasion animals from the ocean may make their way onto the beach. It is illegal to touch and or disturb these animals. If you see a dolphin, whale, seal, or sea turtle come onto the beach, please call the Ranger Dispatch Center at 1 302-739-4580 and do not approach it. The disease or sickness that cause the animal to die or wash up on the beach can be contagious. Digging holes on the beach is a popular activity but it can be dangerous. Large holes dug in the sand are unstable and can collapse, potentially burying people who are in or near the hole. If you dig a hole, please be safe and fill it in when you leave the beach. The surf fishing beaches are carry in, carry out, which means trash cans are not provided and you are responsible for removing your own waste. This includes portable toilet waste. If you use a portable toilet, you are responsible for taking the waste with you. Disposing of your waste on the beach will result in a serious penalty. If you would like to learn more about surf fishing in Delaware, Delaware State Parks offers regular driving on the beach classes throughout the year. For more information on our surf fishing classes, contact Delaware Seashore State Park Cape Henlopen State Park, or visit destateparks.com. Enforcement Actions 
The Delaware Natural Resources Police State Park Rangers patrol the beaches and parks and enforce park rules and regulations as well as criminal and traffic laws. Violations for the first offense of state park rules and regulations vary from $107 to $300. Surf fishing violations may also include the confiscation of the surf fishing permit and a ban from driving on the beach in the future. In conclusion, surf fishing is an exciting recreational activity in Delaware. Following these rules and regulations ensures that you will have a safe and enjoyable experience while maintaining our natural resources for future generations to come.